Welcome to Superior Profit Weekly Market Roundup 28 July 2018. I am Saganandi, Chief Analyst and Trader at Superior Profit based in Singapore. I will not take time to introduce myself. If you are interested to know more about me, the company Superior Profit or how it may help in your trading, you may visit the website superiorprofit.co and click on the about menu. Before we begin, we go through the standard disclaimer. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. It is designed to share information on Superior Profits trading system. The information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Past performance is no guarantee of future return. Superior Profit is not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. Superior Profit will have no liability for any investment decision made by its audience. As usual, we will analyze oil and gold using technical charts. These tend to impact related stocks. When swing trading stocks, we like to align the trades in the direction of the market. We will study the broad market using market breadth of NASDAQ and NYSE and also technical charts for the four broad market ETFs. In addition to aligning our trades with the broad market, we like to align them with the industry strength. We study the industry strength using QH industry scorecard and heat map. That is the typical top-down analysis that we follow in the weekly market roundups. You may use the Q systems for bottom-up analysis as well. While doing the top-down analysis, we may look at some of the recent trade examples shared in Q forum or the social network pages and we will try to identify potential trades for the coming week. That was the last slide of the presentation. Let's move to live system. We begin our commodity study using oil. We are looking at US oil, the oil ETF, using weekly chart with backdrop template and daily chart with hop on template. Together we call this at a glance template because it helps us decide if there is a low risk swing trade entry at the right edge of the chart in only few seconds. In the weekly chart, US oil displayed a bearish headwind signal and then dropped from there. Last week it ended with a long lower tail candle. Q traders are always watchful for such long tail candles. The instrument tends to move in the direction predicted by the long tail. That happened this week also. US oil didn't drop anymore. It closed slightly higher. However, the candle shape is very indecisive. In the daily chart, price had dropped to the yellow direction line. It had very high activity at that point. From there, US oil stabilized and slightly went up. It is inside a triangle pattern formed by the memory resistance at the top and memory support at the bottom. There is no swing trade entry opportunity right now. If US oil comes down and reverses from the memory support line, that may give us either swing long trade opportunity or long day trade opportunity. Gold ETF GLD Gold had been declining steadily. Last week, gold ended with a mixed shape candle with a solid body as well as 
long lower tail. I had mentioned that if gold could recover and go above this watermark support level, we might consider looking for long opportunity at that time. However, that didn't happen. This week gold went down further. The candle is an inside candle. If it reverses next week and goes up above the watermark support here, then we may still have a false downside breakout. We may keep an eye for that. The other possibility is that gold will come to the next watermark support level here. And if that happens, we may look for a possible bounce from that price level. In the daily chart, gold is declining steadily, wrapping around the lower boundary line. It is in clear downtrend. Therefore, we are not going to look for any long trade. It is too oversold near the lower boundary lines. Therefore, we are not going to look for any long trade either. From commodities analysis, we now move to market breadth analysis. Every week, we study market breadth using NASDAQ Composite Index and NYSE Composite Index both using weekly charts. Because this study is using broad indices and longer term weekly interval, this is to be used more for longer term investment decisions, not so much for swing trading and certainly not for day trading. For several weeks now, we had highlighted the bearish divergence that was taking place between NASDAQ Composite Index and NASDAQ New High Low. That seems to be playing out. This week NASDAQ declined and the new high low went below zero. NASDAQ has a memory support line very close to current closing price. Therefore, we will be careful about taking any short trade. The other two internals for NASDAQ advanced decline as well as up down volume decline. Therefore, this week more stocks went down than went up and they went down with higher volume. And also more stocks made new lows than new highs. The internals in NASDAQ are clearly bearish. NYSE was moving sideways inside a range on the weekly chart. That movement is continuing. On a closing basis, NYSE went up this week. Therefore, NYSE outperformed NASDAQ, which didn't happen for several weeks in the past. From the candle it seems NYSE is bullish. However, when we look at the internals, they don't look so bullish. Though NYSE went up, new high low actually declined. It closed above zero, but it declined from previous week. Advanced decline and up down volume both declined and closed below zero. If we combine the insight from the candle charts and the internals, then we conclude that over longer term, both NASDAQ and NYSE are in uptrend. They will remain in uptrend until these memory support lines are broken. However, looking at the immediate week, we see that internals are bearish. Therefore, we may be careful and not take too many long trades right now. Let's see if the same conclusion holds when we study the broad market ETFs. S&P 500 ETF SPY 
in the weekly chart last week we had an indecisive shape candle this week price tried to go up however ended with a mixed shape both with upper tail as well as hollow body the shape is similar to that of nyse in YSE closed higher and SPY also closed higher for the week. In the daily chart, price tried to go up. However, on Friday it sold off, closed just below the memory support line. However, it also closed with a lower tail. SPY is in uptrend, therefore we are not going to look for any short trade right now. It is very close to the upper boundary, therefore we are not going to look for any long trade either. In the last market roundup, I had mentioned that many of the broad market ETFs were at or near resistance levels. Looking at that, I had suggested not to take many long trades instead probably look for short opportunities that analysis was useful there was no useful long trade in this week was there any short trade opportunity let us look at the other broad market ETFs QQQ the Nasdaq ETF in the weekly chart, it had an indecisive shape candle last week. Last week also displayed the bear release signal. This week initially it started to go up, however closed sharply lower with a very bearish shape candle. There is a memory support nearby, therefore we will be careful about taking any short trade. In the daily chart, price was already close to the upper boundary lines. This week it tried to go up. On Thursday, it displayed a bearish headwind signal. That would be a sign for caution. We would not take any short trade because the memory support line was very close. On Friday, initially it opened higher than Thursday's close then sold off. Knowing about the bearish headwind signal that came on Thursday and the breaking of the memory support that happened around 180 level, one could take a low risk day trade at the time price was breaking below the daily memory support level. Stop could be put just above day's high by the end of the day, more than risk distance was covered and the day trade would close with profit. This day trade could be taken looking at the bearish headwind and the breaking of the memory support line. The actual trade could be taken using Q fine tune chart using 5 or 10 minutes interval. QQQ gave a profitable day trade entry opportunity. However, that was not the best day trade entry opportunity. Let us look at the remaining two ETFs to see where we had the best opportunity for day trade. Dow Jones Industrial Average ETF DIA using at a glance template. Earlier, DIA was weaker than SPY and QQQ. However, this week from the weekly candle, you can immediately see that DIA is stronger than both SPY and QQQ. That is also showing up in the relative performance line. In the daily chart, it was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. In the daily chart, price closed at this point last week. This week it gave a cyan colored candle on Tuesday. 
However, price was already near the upper boundary line and also near the watermark resistance level at that time. Looking at that, we would not take any long trade. It went up and closed above the upper boundary line. It is bullish, however, it is above the upper boundary lines. Therefore, we will not try any swing long trade right now. Interestingly, Daya has also displayed a bearish headwind signal on Friday. IWM Russell 2000 ETF. This was the strongest ETF for a while. We can see that from the weekly relative performance white line going up. This week had displayed a candle with long upper tail. And since then, price couldn't cross the high anymore. Last week, IWM came to the memory support line and precisely went up from there. We had discussed that using real-time fine-tune chart, you could take a very precise and profitable day trade at that time. Supports from memory trend lines can be used effectively for taking reversal trades. Similarly, Breaking of memory support can be used to take day trade in the direction of the breakout. This week initially price tried to go up, however, sold off during the week. In the daily chart, price was inside triangle pattern bound by resistance memory and support memory. On Friday, at this price level, IWM broke below support memory and it was the weakest among the four broad market ETFs. For day trading, Q guideline is to short the weakest and long the strongest. Seeing that IWM was the weakest, the best day trade opportunity would have been taken in IWM shorting it at this point, putting stop just above day's high and by the end of the day more than risk distance was covered, day traders would book profit. IWM is the most bearish when we look at both weekly and daily charts. It has magenta color candles in both the charts. This is not a time to take long trade in IWM or in general to try to take long trades in small cap stocks. If we combine the outcome from the market breadth study and the market ETF study, we see that they are confirming the market is bearish in terms of the internals and that bearishness is showing up in the market ETFs as well. Some of the ETFs declined like IWM and QQQ and the ones that didn't decline, SPY and DIA, either ended with a long upper tail or is at resistance level. This is not a time to take long trades Instead, we may look for short trades in the weakest ETF and stock. Let us now continue with the top-down analysis from sector level to try to identify such opportunities. Four-week sector performance. Every week, we study the 11 sectors across three review periods. The red bar represents performance of this week, green bar performance of one week prior to the red bar and blue bar performance of two weeks prior to the green bar. Together they give us four weeks or about one month of performance. Any bar coming to the right of the zero line shows the sector went up. Any bar coming to the left of the zero line shows the sector went down. 
this week six sectors went down five went up showing that for the whole week the market is in balance however on friday all the sectors fell and five of them fell by more than one percent these were significant drop more than one percent in a day Friday's drop was a bearish ending of the week that was otherwise neutral. QH heat map shows that heavy sector rotation is taking place. The sectors that were stronger earlier are becoming weaker and the ones that were weaker are turning stronger. Momentarily we will look at QH to see how the sector rotation is taking place. Healthcare is the worst performer this week, dropped by a massive 3.1%. Several overvalued stocks fell, and the Q charts had warnings of their possible drop. Some of these stocks include TRHC, VEEV, and VCRA. From Q Vital, you could already identify them as overvalued stocks and during the week as healthcare was dropping you could take short trades comfortably using q charts and the unambiguous checklists for trade entry at the end of today's regular session we may stop the recording and then look at these three stocks Telecom is the best performing sector this week. During the week, I had shared a tweet and that was also shared on our mobile app about telecom sector gaining strength not only in the USA but in other countries as well. Telecom was lagging in many countries and during the week using QH, I saw that Telecom was starting to gain strength. Let's have a look at that tweet. On July 24th, I had shared that Telecom is the best performing sector in the USA on that day. You could know that from QH in real time or you could use Q scorecard. Let us look at the heat map as of that day. Telecom services was the best performing sector at that time with a cyan colored score on the one day period. It was magenta earlier showing that it was weak and turned into strength on that day. This was a snapshot from QH for the USA market. I had looked at QH for other countries and saw that telecom was gaining in other countries as well. Looking at the strengthening of telecom, you could look for long trades and there were plenty of them. These three stocks TEF, BT and KT are in integrated telecom services industry. All are optimally valued. We can check it out from Q Vital or QH instantly. Interestingly, all these are non USA based companies. Like British Telecom is in the UK, KT is Korea Telecom. They are traded as ADRs in the USA market. They all went up after displaying the Q bullish headwind signal. This signal is very effective in pinpointing the possible reversal points. Works pretty well. The bullish headwind signals could catch the almost bottom of all these three stocks. During this week, BT gave a trend following go with flow long setup and KT gave a reversal box or headwind long setup on daily charts. Both of these turned out to be very profitable. Let's look at sector rotation from QH and then look at these three stocks T 
TEF, BT and KT in integrated telecom services using their fundamentals as well as their Q charts. This is sector performance from Q edge as of Friday. You can see over five days the picture is mixed. The red bars are some on the right hand side of the zero point and some on the left side. However, one day performance of the sector, the magenta bars are all to the left of the zero line. This shows that on Friday, all the sectors decline and several of them like consumer, discretionary, energy, healthcare, information technology and real estate. These five of them declined by more than one percentage in one day. Those were significant drops. This is the sector scorecard and heat map. From the five days column, that is this week, we can see that healthcare, consumer discretionary and infotech are the worst performing sectors. Telecom, materials and utilities are the best performing sectors. Looking to the right, you will instantly recognize that healthcare, consumer discretionary were cyan earlier even information technology and that shows that these were strong earlier and now turning into weakness whereas utilities materials telecom they were more magenta earlier and now turning cyan this is showing massive sector rotation taking place let us drill down into telecom services sector. We can see that the telecom industries are generally strong this week. If we look at the pace column, we can see all of them accelerated in the current week. Integrated telecom services is of interest because it was very weak earlier, dark magenta, and then turning into strength, color changing to cyan over five days and paste column showing that it is accelerating as well. Let's drill down into integrated telecom stocks. These are the integrated telecom stocks. We can sort the stocks using valuation by double clicking on the column header. From the color coding, we can instantly see that BT, KT, and TEF all are having optimal valuation. They pay reasonable dividend as well, BT paying 6.7%, KT 3.5% and TEF 5.2%. Let's look at their technical charts to see how you could buy these stocks as value stocks as they were starting to go up along with the sector and its industry. TEF Telefonica. In the weekly chart, we can see this was earnings week. It ended with a very bullish shape and bullish color candle. In the daily chart, it displayed bullish headwind signal at the very bottom. In fact, two bullish headwind signals one after another. At that time, the weekly candle color was already yellow or cyan. Therefore, the bullish headwind signals gave us bullish headwind trade setups as well. We could take the trades at the close of respective days, put stop just below recent low. And since then, price went up enough to cover much more than risk distance and the swing trades could be closed with profit. BT, British Telecom. In the weekly chart, BT was also yellow and then cyan for many weeks. In the daily chart, at this point, it displayed a bullish headwind signal. Because the weekly color was already yellow or cyan, this bullish headwind signal also 
gave us a bullish headwind trade setup the trade could be taken at the close of the day stop just below recent low and as BT went higher it covered much more than risk distance and swing traders could book profit both in TEF and BT the bullish headwind signals could be used to catch the very bottom of this optimally valued stocks after reaching the peak it pulled back and then it gave a cyan color candle on Monday that was a go with flow long trade setup one could take a long trade at the close of that day putting stop just below recent low which would also be just below the memory support line by Friday it went up enough to cover more than risk distance and swing traders would book profit we see that there was also a memory resistance line on Friday price hit that memory resistance and closed below that Q traders are always watchful about memory support and resistance lines and book their swing trade profits at those points as would be done in case of BT as well. We can see that this stock BT is jumping up and down from close to close that is common in the ADRs because the ADRs are trading in a different market where the market hours may be different from the US market hours. KT Another value stock in the telecom sector also displayed a bullish headwind at the very bottom in the daily chart and went up from there. Looking at the weekly chart, it had displayed a bullish headwind in the weekly chart as well. And from there, price went up. Later on, it tried to retest the low. This week completed a false downside reversal. This week is the week when it displayed the bullish headwind in the daily chart using the false downside reversal in the weekly and the bullish headwind in the daily chart. One could take a long at the close of this candle put stop just below recent low and probably book profit on Friday. There is a memory resistance line nearby looking at that long position holders will be careful and might book profit on friday if they do not book profit on friday they may watch kt carefully next week to see if it is breaking the memory resistance and going up or is it reversing from there making sure that this profitable trade doesn't turn into a losing trade now we are looking at the top 10 best performing industries of this week we are looking at these industries 5 days and 10 days scores we can see that for several of the industries last week's and this week's scores are at around the same levels therefore they were probably strong last week and continued to be strong this week as well the materials sector is one of the strongest sectors this week and that strength is showing in three of the materials industries coming in the best performers list these are diversified metals and mining copper and aluminium you may be careful taking any short trade in these industries and instead look for long opportunities drug retail is in the best performers list and walgreens boots alliance we discussed this stock earlier also it has optimal valuation and steady earnings growth it gave an easy trend following go with flow long setup this week on 25th july and that trade hit profit target by friday if you look back you could also take a long on WBA on 5th July 
using false downside breakout that was accompanied with volume exertion and the false downside breakout happened at deep Q watermark support pivot. There was Q bull release possible reversal signal as well. Let us look at Q edge to identify the best performing industries. Locate drug retail, drill down into WBA to see its fundamentals and then look at Q charts to see how you could easily take a trend following long trade in WBA on 25th July. These are the best performing industries for the week. Their 5 days score is shown in cyan color. You can see several of them were magenta earlier like aluminium, copper, many of them, tires and rubber showing that these industries were weak earlier and are now starting to go up. Drug retail is also one such industry which was weak earlier and now gaining strength shown by the color transition from magenta to cyan. Let's drill down. WBA is a stock in the drug retail industry. From the color coding instantly we see that it is optimally valued. Primary valuation is in cyan color and the EPS growth is holding steady for last three years as well as for the last three quarters. WBA also pays a dividend of 2.5% has good earnings quality. Let's look at the Q charts. In the daily chart, there was a big drop associated with earnings. From there, the stock moved up, pulled back and went up again, giving us a cyan color candle at this point. That was a signal to take a trend following long trade. Entry would be just at the close of this candle. Stop would be just below recent low. And by Friday, when price came to the watermark resistance and to the upper boundary lines, the swing traders could book profit. That was an easy trade to take in a fundamentally strong stock with industry strength supporting the trade. If you look at the weekly chart, you can see that in the past this price level where we have a watermark support. The price was supported many times. Then during earnings that support was breached only to recover the very next week. It was associated with heavy activity pointing to possible exertion. Therefore, when price reversed back above the watermark support level at 61.55 level, using the daily chart, we could look for potential long entry. In the daily chart, at that time, we had a bull release signal on this day. We could look for a long trade either at the close of this candle as a bounce long trade setup or probably at the close of this candle as a box long trade setup. In both of those cases, stop would be below recent low and as price went up, both those entries gave more than risk distance and profit could be booked. When this false downside breakout was happening at these price levels, WBA could be bought as swing trade as well as for long term investment. Worst performing industries of the week, we are looking at their 5 days and 10 days scores. 
we can see for some of them like home entertainment software biotech the weakness was there from previous week as well and for some like consumer electronics and tracking they were stronger earlier and drop heavily this week home building was weak one week ago as well this week seven home building stocks dropped by more than nine percent seven of the stocks that are in our stock scorecard fell by more than nine percent these are massive drops there were many q trade opportunities tph had one of them and it gave a very clear trend following q short trade setup on 28th july that turned out to be very profitable biotech is another industry that was weak from one week ago itself tpiv gave a trend following go with flow short trade setup on 20th july the stock dropped by more than 27 percent since then resulting in a hugely profitable trade let's look at the worst performing industries in q8 look at home building and biotech and then further drill down into tph and tpiv look at their fundamentals and then look at their technical charts to see how using q systems you could take these profitable trades in qh the worst performing industries of the week are shown with magenta color over five days period home building and biotech both are magenta this week showing their weakness and from the heat map we can see that home building is weak for a while whereas biotech was strong earlier cyan color and now turning magenta both are ripe industries for looking for short trades let's drill down into home building first tph this stock in terms of growth has positive growth very nice growth in fact however in terms of valuation it is overvalued therefore we had reasons to look for short trades in tph instead of drill down for the biotech stock we can locate it from the stock panel itself tpiv instantly from the color coding we can see that it has no growth no data on growth and the valuation is very weak so we had two industries biotech and home building both the industries were weak and we had two stocks in them both with weak valuation and one of them no growth as well these are the best opportunities for looking for short trades let's look at q charts now tph the home building stock one week ago it ended up with a very bearish shape candle and also with magenta color that is bearish on the daily chart last week ended with a magenta color candle that gave us a very clear go with flow short trade opportunity price was going down with lower highs and lower lows pull back to value area hit the yellow direction line and then dropped from there we could take a short trade right at the close of that candle putting stop just above recent high and by this friday it dropped massively giving us very large profit in the swing trade swing traders could book partial profit at the lower boundary itself following discipline as the industry was weak the stock was overvalued and the chart was very weak there was no reason to exit full position partial position would be held and that partial position 
gave us much larger profit. TPIV in the weekly chart we had a long upper tail candle in this week and since then price could never go up showing once again why Q traders are always watchful about long tail candles. That candle color was still cyan. After that, candle color turned to yellow. Last week, it had turned magenta. Backdrop color magenta is bearish. And last week, on the daily chart, ended with a magenta color and bearish shape candle as well. Price was starting to roll over. We could take a go with flow trend following short trade at the close of this candle putting stop just above recent high as the stock fell down and hit lower boundary partial profit would be booked as the stock is fundamentally weak industry is weak chart is very bearish this is again another case where we will not like to book full profit we will hold partial position to try to let profit run the most accelerating industries of this week the accelerating industries often end up being the best performers in subsequent weeks we saw that telecom is the best performing sector of the week and that is also reflected in three of the telecom industries appearing in the most accelerating list in fact, telecom has only these three industries in QH. Therefore, all the telecom industries are in the most accelerating list. Telecom was weak for a long time. This may be a good time to start looking for swing long as well as long term long opportunities. Wireless telecom services is one of the accelerating telecom industries and NIHD went up by 45% in one week. Q system signaled a trend following go with flow long setup on Monday which turned out to be hugely profitable. Let's locate the accelerating industries in QH drill down into wireless telecom services identify in IHD look at its fundamentals and then its technical charts in QH the accelerating industries are shown with cyan color over the base column five days column represents this week wireless telecom services is an industry that became strong the five day score is in cyan color and its strength came from high acceleration which is shown in the base column cyan color. Let's drill down in IHD. This is a stock not with great fundamentals. Valuation is weak. Growth is also not that good. This stock went up by 45% in this one week. Let's look at Q charts to see if you could take a long trade just as the stock was going up. In IHD, we saw this stock is overvalued. The up move in the weekly chart probably explains that. If we were keeping an eye on the stock, we could probably buy it as it was breaking out of the narrow range base in the weekly chart. One possible point of buy would be sometime in this week the actual entry could be taken in daily charts. We make our trading decisions at the right edge. Last week it ended down with a magenta color candle but this week it sharply reversed. At 4.17 price level, it went above previous week's body. 
that was the same time that we had this cyan color candle in the daily chart. Combining the information of the weekly chart that it was going above previous week's body and that we had a cyan color candle in the daily chart with higher high and higher low. We could take a long trade at the close of this cyan candle putting stop just below recent low and with discipline book partial profit at the upper boundary continue to hold the remaining position as the stock went up further. For this week it went up by about 45 percent plus. If we had taken the trade at the close of this hand color candle and are holding it at the close of Friday that gave us more than 20 percent profit. The Q technical charts could identify this trade easily. It came on Q sonar right on the day that the go with flow trend following long setup appeared. Decelerating industries. We are studying the industries 5 days and 10 days course. You can see that for all these industries, 5 days that is this week's score is much smaller than 10 days score showing that they decelerated. Consumer electronics is one industry that decelerated heavily. GoPro, GPRO and Sony ADR, SNE they are both overvalued. GoPro gave a trend following short signal on 20th July and then again on 27th July. You could take them easily using Q charts. SNE has displayed a bearish headwind on this Friday. For both GoPro and Sony earnings are nearby. You could take profitable short trades in GoPro and you may look for potential short trade in Sony. Let's look at QH to study the decelerating industries. Locate consumer electronics, drill down to GoPro and Sony's fundamentals and then look at their technical charts. In QH the decelerating industries show up with magenta color in the base column. Consumer electronics is an industry that decelerated heavily shown by pace column and from the scores we can see it was cyan earlier for a long time and now turned very weak with a deep magenta color score. These are more attractive for looking for short trades because they were strong earlier the stocks might be at a higher level and you could short them just at that point they were starting to come down along with the industry. And if we look for overvalued stocks or slowing growth stocks we could align the fundamental weakness with the short trade and finally use Q charts to short them right at the point they are starting to go down. Let's drill down to consumer electronic stock. GoPro is overvalued SNE Sony is not overvalued. It is optimally valued but its growth is slowing down. EPS growth in the latest quarter is slowing down. Both of them have earnings nearby that is shown by the red color background on the next EPS day. So in one of the stocks we have overvaluation in another we have slowing growth. Both have reasons to start to look for short trades. Let's look at Q technical charts. GoPro in the weekly chart it went up for several weeks. Then the weekly candle color turned yellow neutral. This week also had a bearish shape body. Next week color was neutral again and a bearish shape body. This week color turned bearish with a bearish shape body. 
while that was happening in the weekly chart, in the daily chart, it started to create lower highs and lower lows gave us a magenta color candle here. That was the first trend following short opportunity that we had. We could put stop just above recent high and try to book profit once either the lower boundary is hit or the risk distance is covered. On Friday, it has given another magenta color candle that could also be taken as another trend following short trade setup. Using real time sonar, one could probably catch the short trade somewhere at this price level as price was going below last day's low. The actual entry could be taken using Q fine tune chart. The chart looks quite bearish both on daily as well as on the weekly. The stock is overvalued, the industry is decelerating. These are the 360 degree trades that Q traders like to take. 360 degree trades align forces from industry, fundamental and technicals with the direction of the trade. Sony, in the weekly chart, we can see that this week had a long upper tail. Just before that, it displayed a bearish headwind signal. The upper tail created a watermark resistance level. For many months, that watermark was not hit. One week ago, price tried to touch that and closed below that price level. This week again it tried to touch the watermark resistance but closed below that. In weekly we have two successive weeks of indecisive shape candle both with upper as well as lower tails. Candle colors are still cyan that is bullish. However it is at watermark resistance that resistance is holding for many months so we would be careful about taking long trades and instead look for shorts. In the daily chart price tried to come to the same watermark resistance that was in weekly and displayed a bearish headwind signal on Friday. Friday closed just above the memory support so we were not going to take any short trade. However, we may look for low risk short opportunity in Sony, probably using fine tuned real time chart with 5 minute or 10 minute interval. You may keep an eye on Sony for potential short setup. Those were the regular topics. Let me summarize and then I will study a few more stocks that I mentioned earlier in healthcare technology and also another possible short opportunity that I found from Sonar. Let me summarize first and stop the recording. When we look at the broad market breadth, then we see that after many weeks, NYSE outperformed NASDAQ. NASDAQ went down and internals are very bearish. Though NYSE went up, its internals are bearish as well. When we look at the broad market ETFs, we see the ones that were strong earlier, QQQ and IWM are looking weaker. And though DIA and SPY are relatively stronger, they are not giving confidence to take long as well. At the sector level, when we looked at the weekly performance, we saw that the market was balanced. However, on Friday, all the sectors declined and five of them declined by more than 1%. So end of the week was clearly very bearish. 
though at the market and sector level it is looking more bearish over longer term it continues to be in uptrend whatever be the market condition drilling down to industry level and further looking at stocks fundamentals and technicals we can probably always identify long as well as short opportunities longs where industry is strong fundamentals are strong and we have a technical low risk buy point and shorts where industries are weak fundamentals are weak and we have a low risk short point we could identify several such stocks this week as well that is all that i plan to share in today's session thank you for joining i look forward to seeing you in our next session have a great weekend and trade profitably give me a minute let me stop the recording then i will analyze few more stocks